Um, thank you for coming. Very pleased to say we've got lots of innovations for you tonight. One is a new technology. So Dr. Awanto's lecture will be recorded and viewable on the website in a few days if it works. In fact, all of the talks are on the website now, so, so please visit the website. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, the other innovation is that uh, Dr. Uanto is a, a social demographer, so his, his, his classical uh, work was on migration studies. Um, and Indonesia is a very large country with a, a large demography and a great deal of migration. Um, so he's been in that field for a long time, but he's, now, uh, he's also worked in the archaeological field. And so this is really the beginning of uh, a scientific study of the impact of archaeological sites on, on the society surrounding them. So that, that's a complex subject where you really need to know the in, internal uh, pressures in a society. Um, the various constituencies uh, involved by the fact that suddenly you've got a massive archaeological site being uncovered and a massive influx of new people um, who, uh, who don't know an awful lot about the place. Uh, some of them do, but some, most of them don't. So that uh, the, the impacts are interesting and we all need to be aware and alert to some of the issues that arise from, that, arise from that. I don't, I haven't found much in the literature at all on the subject, so I think uh, uh, Ruanto is, is, a, is, is a pioneer in this subject, and that, that's because it's a multidisciplinary uh, subject which is being applied um, to a new area. So I'd like to welcome um, Dr. Ruanto, who is from the uh, LIPI, which is a very large, research institution in Indonesia. Those of you who don't know it, it's far bigger than SOAS. It's several thousand researchers in many disciplines uh, distributed around uh, Java, principally. Um, and uh, we're lucky to um, have a lecture because uh, his daughter is coming to collect her MA from Edinburgh next week, and he's going to attend. <laughs> so welcome to SOAS. Uh, thank you, Peter, for uh, very kind introductions, and <clears throat> good evening, uh, everybody. I feel very honored, but also rather nervous to be here in this very uh, prestigious uh, place, SOAS, which I only heard before, but then this today I, I have been here. And as Peter has mentioned earlier, I'm a social demographer by training. I study at ANU, Australian National University in, in Canberra, Australia. But I work in a research institute which is basically a multidisciplinary uh, researchers there. It belongs to the one of the centers under the Indonesian Institute of Sciences or LIPI. And my research center is called Research Center for Society and Cultures. So we are mostly not an economist, we are not a political scientist, they have their own centers. We are mostly sociologists, anthropologists, a uh, couple of archaeologists, myself a social demographer. So in our centers we tend to approach uh, research issues from uh, multidisciplinary approach and <clears throat> in the last five years I decided to concentrate on the development in Java, Java Island 
before as a social demographer, I used to study migrations, movement of peoples. So mostly outside Java. My work, firstly on the issues of trans migrations, state sponsored uh, movement of peoples, mostly outside Java. But since the last five years, I uh, devoted my time to look at Java with my uh, teamwork. So <clears throat> the study on the politics of cultural heritage actually is one of my previous work. It has been finished just last year. It was conducted within three years. And what I want to present is only a part of the research finding that we are doing. So as I talk with Peter, we agree to talk about the, how the local communities surrounding the uh, historical site, the archaeological site actually responding to the existence of the site itself, itself, but also responding to the opportunities that is open in relation to the historical sites. Uh, we decided to look at the three major sites in Java, which I'm sure all of you are very familiar. First, the Borobudur Buddhist temples in central Java. This is the, <coughs> the artifact of the 7th to 9th centuries uh, Japanese Buddhist uh, kingdom at the time, which I think uh, one of the famous uh, cultural heritage in the world. And the second one is rather less uh, knowledgeable, that is the ruin of Hindu Majapahit kingdoms in East Java, in a place called Trowulan. And it was exist during the 12th and 13th centuries, so after the uh, Buddhist uh, uh, kingdoms. And the third uh, site that we decided to look is the ruin of Islamic Sultanate in Banten Lama. It's uh, between 15th and 16th centuries. Uh, Banten is the new province before it's part of the West Java province. So after 2000 they decided, the people of Pantan decided to uh, have their own province. This is also an interesting development if you look at the Indonesian's political development because after the Suharto government's uh, step down, Indonesia is actually entering into a new political development in which uh, decentralization, the regional autonomy is underway. And I would like to uh, mention this because we are conducted uh, these studies within the, that context of the new kind of regional autonomy. So the center is actually no longer dominate, dominate the political development. So this is the three cultural heritage that we are working with. And we are trying to approach the issues from a rather loosely uh, designed research uh, methodology, what, what, what we call it for the moment, the political economic approach. And within that approach, we basically look at how the 
stakeholders we identify who are actually the the stakeholders within its sites who are dealing with these cultural heritage sites. So within this approach, we look at the aspect of history, but also how the regulations, as well as the economy. And we also look at almost all stakeholders, both the states or the, the governments, the society, the private sectors, because you must be familiar with, with the tourist, uh, tourism, which is al always part of the uh, cultural heritage activities here, yeah. but also the, the society surroundings, the, the cultural heritage, which in my talk will be the, the focus of, uh, of my, dis my, my, my presentations. So by this approach, then we actually uh, try to analyze the different interests of the stakeholders that contest to obtain benefit both economically and politically from that cultural heritage site. The result of conflict and cooperation between the states private sectors, the international organization, as well as the society, constitute the measurements of the current condition, as well as the likely futures of our cultural heritage. So the idea of this research is trying to analyze, to map out who are actually the, the stakeholders who are working within that cultural heritage side and how actually the power relations between the, the stakeholders who have their own, <coughs> each stakeholder have their own interests here. Yeah. It's rather simple approach, but I think it's very interesting because we are not an archaeologist like Peter and other here maybe, so we look at the cultural heritage from really non-archaeological perspective. We look at cultural heritage as a site of a contestation of stakeholders who try to get benefit from that historical site. And let, let's start with, with the Trowulan. Uh, the existing situation is the, the, is the ruins or the artifacts that are scattered in several sub-districts and suffer from a clear management policy. This is our findings. There are many sites within that uh, the cultural heritage sites which we found that each site is managed by different authorities and this is uh, really posing this site a risk for further damage. So there is no one management in that site. This is very important findings. And the local communities that occupy the archaeological site the surrounding areas, I think, need to be given an economic alternative within the sustainable cultural heritage management framework. That is the, the, the finding, because I will show you that through some, this is our report on, on we have three sites, so we have three reports. This is on the Majapahit site. And this is what I mean by the threat from the local communities. This is actually an area, it's very huge, and the local communities are mostly working to make uh, tiles, yeah? Batamera. 
So they dig the, the, the soils and you can imagine that almost in this area all the 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 the, the artifact actually is, is within this 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 underneath of this the soil. So you can imagine how the people activities, the economic activities of the people who are digging the soil are really threatening the 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 sites. Uh, this is a picture of what is some of the local local communities actually doing. They are producing as, as souvenirs and you can see how uh, actually very simple uh, workshops there and you can also imagine the level of economic uh, welfare of these people. So they are making the souvenirs for tourists in, in Trabulan. Uh, this is also another more advanced uh, kind of fragment to make a, a statues of the old uh, kingdoms of Trabulans. The tourist industry is, uh, is, 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 is growing. <clears throat> but as no clear one management of the site, you can imagine that all are developing on their own way. And this is just an example how the, the people actually are making their life from the tourists who are coming to this site. Uh, This is a Muslim community in, in, in Trowulan. Trowulan is a Hindus, is a, a ruin of Hindus uh, kingdoms. But as almost everywhere in Java, now are the population are Muslims, Muslim Muslims. And this is a very interesting uh, development in that aside because this Muslim uh, group found also or claim also that within the Majapahit kingdom there are uh, uh, a history of the Muslim peoples and and this Muslim groups uh, with their own initiatives try to claim that there is a Muslim cultural heritage within the, the, the Majapahit uh, cultural heritage. So they even built their own kind of uh, buildings based on their interpretations which is actually shows how the surrounding people the who are Muslim Muslim actually try to claim that even though this is a Hindus uh, kingdom but they also have a Islamic kind of uh, uh, dimensions and they are dominating the the site and developing and build uh, building a uh, their own uh, uh, cemetery yeah they develop a big complex of what they claim as uh, Muslim saints in that in that areas and again it shows how the, uh, the management of that cultural heritage actually is beyond the, the state's control. Every site have their own constituents and they claim 
they control the sites. This is a Muslim part, and you can also imagine that even the Buddhist group <laughs> uh, create their own uh, temples, which is also very interesting. How again the 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 different group actually claim they have a, an attachments to a cultural heritage which is basically a Hindu Hindus, uh, kingdom. It's a very big uh, sleeping Buddha. It's not far from the Hindu temples. So again they are interpreting or uh, based on their own perspective and they want to uh, show that they are also part of this uh, heritage. This is only built in 1980 something. This is very new creations. So again you can see how active the, the, the communities in claiming within that site. This is another development if you follow the news from East Java. There is a plan to make a steel plant, uh, a kind of factories, which, well, this is really a, a business people who want to make a, a factories, a, a steel plant factories. And exactly within the area of the, <coughs> the, the cultural heritage sites. And, and luckily a group of young uh, people from the surrounding areas working with the NGOs in Surabaya, that's the capital of East Java, and try to stop this planning. And I think they are very successful in stop the development of this this plan. So you can see they already make some 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 progress there, but at the moment this development is is already stopped. Again, I want to show you how the cultural heritage, which is a Hindu kingdoms then becoming uh, attractions of the different stakeholders and try to claim uh, kind of attachment to that, that side, both the business people as well as the religious groups, as well as the local communities. So now I move to the second the second site, this is for a Buddha, which is, must be a well-known one. We, I think it's very clear that this is the most advanced model of cultural heritage governance in Indonesia in which the international and national governments coexist. As you know, the UNESCO has played a very active role in, in uh, <coughs> restoring the Buddhas. And until now, they are still giving advice and partly finance the management of the Borobudur sites. At the site, however, a contestation occurs between, this is the new development, local government, because now the regional autonomy is given to the so-called district level government with the management of the Borobudur, it's under the uh, Ministry of uh, BUMN, that's the, what is the, under the Ministry of BUMN, BUMN is the state-owned enterprise. enterprise, yeah. But also with the archaeological office that is belong or under the Ministry of Cultures, of course, with the local community. So you you can see how the 
contestation is occurring between different stakeholders, both international and locals, as well as the, the communities. In that process, we found that the local communities perceive themselves as being excluded in the process of managing the cultural heritage. This is the maybe the the most profitable tourist destinations. <laughs> so you can imagine if the 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 money is actually tapped by the state owned enterprise then the local communities generally is are excluded within that 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 management. This is the situation in Barabudur. It's very different with, with Trawulan, the first site. This is more advanced in terms of the management, but still you can see how the local communities actually is excluded within the, the management of the, this cultural heritage. <coughs> Uh, one of the interesting findings that we found in this Barabudur site is the constant protest from the local communities. If you look at the history of the restorations of Barabudur since early 70s and then 80s, as the sites need a kind of uh, a wide landscape landscape they move out the people from the sides and these people still throughout the new generations very interesting and interestingly still continue protesting that kind of uh, event yeah? I mean they still remember how they were pushed out and so on and so on. And this is become very interesting development because again it seems that there is no clear uh, kind of uh, regulation how to divide the, 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 the benefits of the sites both the local governments, the local populations, and this uh, state-owned enterprise who actually control or dominating the sites. And with the new law on the regional autonomy, I think then the contestations between the local government and this state-owned enterprise is becoming very clear now. And Again, as my focus of the talk is on the local on the local communities, it also shows very clearly how they actually is not really part of the management. They were marginalized and they were continuously protesting the, 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 the what they, they perceive as uh, improper management of the site. <coughs> the, 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 again, I mean, as, 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 as commonly uh, found everywhere in the, uh, the cultural heritage site, people try to make things for, for tourism, souvenirs, and so on. And I think it's very clear that. Karabudur is one of the most uh, attractive uh, destinations for the international tourism. And <coughs> people try to make use of this and, and try to get benefit from these situations. Another issue that is currently being seen as a problem is how to maintain the Borobudur from a huge number of tourists who are climbing the climbing the the temples and 
my colleagues who are archaeologists believe that when they step <laughs> to the to the to the to the stone they will erase some part of the so there is a kind of concerns about how to manage these issues but so far I don't think there is a clear uh, solutions on these issues. The third site that we are in interested in is uh, a ruin of uh, Islamic Sultanate in Banten. Compared with the other two, this is the most uh, endangered site. This archaeological site is threatened by the absence of clear state policy on cultural heritage management. No such thing like uh, heritage management in this site. It was left to outside government agencies. So there is a continuation of fragmented authority in which, this is very interesting with this site, in <coughs> which different genealogical and inheritance claim access, create uncertainty in the future of this cultural heritage. So there are at least two families who claim to be the direct ancestors of the Sultanate, at least two who are claiming at the moment. And they are controlling uh, the most important part of the site, which is the mosque and its surroundings. So you can imagine if this Uh, Muslim groups who are very powerful claiming the sites then nobody dare to kind of enter into that area even the government so it's really left to the <laughs> private uh, groups so in our study we found that unless a proper management is able to be formulated and is able to be uh, implemented, I think the futures of this Islamic Sultanate site is, is, is really in danger. Uh, I will show you some, this is the the most important part of that site, this is the, the mosque. And this is really belong to the private uh, families who are contested between two families. And it's very interesting, we found that eventually they are agreed to share. So they are take turn in, <laughs> in controlling the, the, the site. What is, the ben what is their benefit? Indonesia is now becoming a very is kind of Islamic uh, country in which uh, religious tourism is increasing. And Banten Lama is one of the Muslims' tourist destinations. And and if you control this mosque, then you will be able to tap the, the donation, actually, which is given by the, the tourists to the mosque. And almost every day you can find a lot of buses coming to this place. And and it's very clear if you control this site, then you will get a kind of economic benefit. This is actually the the the, the, the sites of the sultanates. It's it's 
all there without clear uh, management. And if you look at the site, then the mosque actually is the most look after uh, artifacts. Again, it's because it was controlled, but also because it's not a dead monument, it's a living monument. People are coming to pray, they use the mosque and so on, Friday prayers and so on. It's a living monument. But again, I mean, people's surroundings are trying to get benefits from the local tourism. Not a properly designed, they are scattered around the areas, and I think it's also become a problem in the preservation of that, that site. So compared with Barabudur, this site is really left behind. The, the, the worst uh, situation compared with the other two. Uh, this is what we try to get information. One of the methods that we use as a researcher is, is conducting a kind of local workshop local workshop and trying to to discuss with the with the with the, all the stakeholders what are their perception what are they are doing what are they hoping about the site and so on so in t on, on on the three sites we are organizing a kind of local workshop as part of our method to get the information it's very interesting exercise because lipi is also a government <laughs> government research institutes and they normally are very cooperative and they are happy to talk with us and we try to find what is the best way to solve the problems. So in each site we conducted kind of local workshops, invited both the state officials, the private sectors, the local populations, as well as the academics who are working in the area. <coughs> so to conclude, I think we found that while local communities always exist, they are generally ignored and excluded in the official management of the cultural heritage. The involvement of local communities accepts in Barabudur manifests in various forms of activities, more often than not, threatening the preservation of the cultural heritage. So it's become very logical that to find a balance between purposeful preservation on the one side and sustainable economic development is a major challenge in the cultural heritage management in these three major cultural heritage sites in Java. Well, that's all I can tell to you and I hope you can get some insight what is the situation in Java in general and also these three major cultural heritage. So you can imagine if this major site is not properly managed then you can find other sites in many places in Indonesia actually. We are struggling to uh, preserve, restore and so on. But again there is likely a uh, major problems in our way to manage our cultural heritage and it's also 
becoming very interesting to see how people actually become more, becoming more interested in in talking, discussing, and involving, engaging in the issues of cultural heritage. And this is uh, something that I think is very good development in Indonesia at the moment. I think I will stop there. <laughs> I hope it gives you some ideas on what is happening in Indonesia today.